lawnmowers. Let's um, rise and give our our honors. Five on the left, two on the right. Facing the east. A lot of father of the universe. A lot of father of the universe. Father of love. Father of love. Truth. Truth. Peace. Peace. Freedom. Freedom. And justice. A lot of my protector, a lot of my protector, my guide, my guide, and my salvation. And my salvation. By night, by night, and by day, and by day, was only prophet, was only prophet, and over Drawley, over Drawley, is love, is love. Peace and love. We're gonna start with our to be proclaimed every meeting, writings. Um, first of all, I want to say his love to all the Morris. Peace, love, and OTEP, online Mars, worldwide Mars, and anybody else out there who recognizes this nationality and birthright that we're claiming and proclaiming. To be proclaimed in every meeting, Islam, I'm glad to know that I have a few faithful Mars among you all, and I desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth. There is a host of jealousy about me and the movement now by the same people on our side of the nation that claim it was only a joke and unreal. But now since they have found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend upon for their earthly salvation as American citizens, they are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they themselves may take charge of the situation. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful Moors that attribute to the movement and uplifting funds. The ones that paid their divine respect to me and the movement will be remembered. That is why I am calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet, and your divine Moorish movement. I need finance and I need it badly. Never before have I needed finance so badly as I do at present so I can shove aside the discord that is facing the nation. It all comes through jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without I, the prophet, being head. It has been proven by my works, which I have performed in the last few years. And then the other warning to be read in every meeting. I hereby inform all members that they must put an end to all radical and agitating speeches while on their jobs, homes, or on the public streets. We advocate peace and not destruction. Stop trying out your cards with Europeans, for it causes confusion. There has been much confusion caused by members trying out their cards. The cards are for your salvation. Failure of obeying my orders will be of severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, freedom, and when these principles are violated, Justice must then take its course. Any member or group of members that seek to hold malicious feelings toward the temple or the prophet or to violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their reward from Allah for their unjust deeds. All true Moors must obey the laws laid down to them by their prophet. And if they lose confidence in their prophet, give up your card and button, cease wearing your turban or fez, and return to the state where I, the prophet, found you. For this is a holy and divine movement founded by the Prophet Nobu Juali. And if the Prophet is not right, the temple is not right. The Prophet is sending out a divine plea to all true Moorish Americans that they may do their part in protecting their Prophet and the temple. This is an everlasting movement founded by the Prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sinful ways. Now, Nobu Juali sent out a divine plea to all true Moorish Americans. So that means that there's fake ones. Being that there's fake Moorish Americans, Moors who are faithful to the Prophet, down with the program of the Prophet, have to know so that they can not get into the, the jurisdiction of of agreeing to disagree with people, right? Um, there's 
there's a there's a a release valve. There's a release valve that that unconscious people, uh, unconscious morals, and conscious unconscious morals use in order to um, in order to give a disguise of unity. And their statement is whenever something comes up and there's a quote-unquote disagreement and they don't want to get down what the Moors are saying because of whatever, you know, fiction that they believe in, they'll say, let's just agree to disagree so we can get past this whatever and then, you know, we can focus on unifying our people and focus on getting the job done because there's so much work that we need to do, blah, blah, blah. Agreeing to disagree is a fraud. That Moors don't want to get caught up in out of helping our people. Out of, well, you know, we got to meet them where they are. And where, all those days are, are over. They don't meet anybody in the grave anymore. Either they're going to crawl up out of it or they're going to grab our hand and get pulled off. Other than that, you're staying in the grave. Because as soon as we start getting into accommodating um, the ignorance, you are contracting. If you agree to disagree, you just contracted. And once you contract, you already know that contract gets violated around here. Every day, all day. Right? So, um, one of the Moors sent me um, a dialogue that he had with a Moor that was trying to do the, you know, agree to disagree because, you know, we need to unify as more, right? And the more was speaking from the perspective of, nah, I know what's up, <laughs> right? You're not trying to pull nothing on me, right? So this is how, this is how the, the conversation went, right? Or, or, or the more who was trying to force his position on the studious more, Islam to the more, you already know what's up. Islam more, are you a member of the Moore Science Temple of America? The link you shared has no familiar officials. Our current Supreme Grand Chief and Chairman is E. Braswell Bay. I am a faithful soldier in the Moorish Divine National Movement and only express these concerns for the sake of our posterity. We are nationals by religious right. First, first flag should be, you know what I mean? That we're nationals because of religious right, right? That that should let you know the jurisdiction that the, that this more is speaking from. Just that statement that we're Moors because of a religious right, right there alone, there should be bells and whistles and arrows or whatever pointing to draw your attention. We are part and partial, P-A-R-T-I-A-L, right? Which, you know, as we know, we already looked up in the law dictionary, no such term as part and partial. The law term is part and parcel. So we know that the, um, we know that the, the, the disagreement that Moors have with other Moors, why there can't be unity across the board amongst Moors, is because of misinformation that Moors have that they got from Moors that they say, you know, our current supreme whatever and grand whatever, you know, how come your website doesn't have any officials on it and we have an official called Supreme or whatever? But those people with the official that says Supreme or whatever like that, they're talking about partial, part and partial. They're talking about religious right to a nationality. All right? We are nationals by religious right, citizens by the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> Right? These are Moors, huh? These are Moors. These are Moors that that dirty Moors sent out 
with a rope attached to them so they can pull them back when you know they start getting around moors who are going to school them as to what these dirty bastards are trying to put them on sending them out there to go be missionaries to tell people that they're citizens they're national by the Declaration of Independence, which is for Europeans. The Declaration of Independence, if people don't know, is a document for Europeans. That's not a document for Moors to use to say that that's our position. Only Moors that are going to side with the fact that Moors are connected to Declaration of Independence, Moors are connected to Articles of Association, Moors are connected to the Constitution, Moors are connected to all these things, are Moors who are telling people that they have to naturalize in order to be free, right? And again, if, if Moors, if Moors are speaking from the perspective to Negro, Black, colored people, that they're citizens by the Declaration of Independence and their religious right to a nationality. Negro black color ain't no one trying to hear that. They'd rather stay, stay serving Jesus. That's a religion there too. That's a religion there too. Right? Why would they why would they come over here if it's the same thing as where they are? Because remember, when when you deal with with um Moors that aren't studious. When you deal with Moors who don't study, they just parrot stuff that they heard because that guy said it, and then that guy said it, and then that guy said it. But nobody went to go check to see what was said, you know, part and partial. Anybody look it up? All these people quoting part and partial all over the place, but nobody ever looked up to see that it's not even in the dictionary. No different than racism. Oh yeah, it's racism or whatever. Or anybody look that up? See that that's not even something in the dictionary? Not even regular dictionary, law dictionary. Because they are supposed to be constitutional, they are supposed to be civic minded. If they say Islam or Moorish American, the standard is that we deal with civic, right? Since we reclaim our nationhood through our religious right, we are part and partial of this United States government. Right? United States government. Okay? Now, not, not United States of America Republic government. United States government. Right? Not being specific. Once again, comes back to that thing of, you know, um, not studious. Because studious Moors know that you're not going to walk around, uh, you know, just talking to people, sending messages to people, and talk about, yeah, well, you know, as a person, you have a right to do it because you already know a person's corporation, you say that, you just put yourself in the jurisdiction. So more than specific. No, no, no thinking more is going to talk about United States government in the perspective like that's a government when we already know 1933 bankruptcy, those guys are a fraud, they're pretending to be government, they're not really government, we are. Right. Come to the MST of A and learn from Prophet Noble Juali's writings, we aren't United States made citizens, but national citizens. But we are naturalized, thus being part of the US government, subject to the whole. All true citizens must do what? There is, there's the general definition. Naturalization is the process by which US citizenship is granted to a foreign citizen or national simply by belonging to a foreign corporation. That is why you are naturalized when you join the MST of A. Some more. Some more. With a fez on. L on his name. And this was just half of the dialogue that he had with a studious more who slapped him with what it really is. That he didn't want to accept. But, you know, our unity agree to disagree with you so we can, you know, get over this disagreement that we have. When there ain't no disagreement, somebody's running a fraud, and then somebody's not. And the people that are running the fraud are continually trying to get their foot in the door so they can have a position 
on the soapbox or podium or whatever like that, you know, so so they can be heard talking this crap right here. When when no, last last um, part. The true teachings of noble duality and love and membership in the true MSTA is not for the weak. I must warn you. I'm going into a meditative state for a while. Any further comments I will respond tonight. I don't know what he's meditating on. Wherever he's going to go meditate, they ain't the spot to be going to. Because there is no way it's impossible for this individual to vibrate on a frequency called meditative state if they don't know that U.S. is a corporation, if they think that we're citizens because of religious right, if they think that because the Declaration of Independence gave somebody freedom that, you know, we can use that to get freedom too. If they're talking about part and parcel, if they're talking about, you know, how come you guys don't have any familiar officials of the MSDA? We got all the officials over here. Here's the list of all of them, right? There's no way that he's getting into any meditative state. Even if they're closing his eyes in darkness and, you know, pretend that he's traveling somewhere. Either. Because Juali told the Moors that this is divine and national. There's two columns that make this foundation stand up. If we're not dealing with all of them, if we're not dealing with both columns harmoniously, we have a building that's like this. And, you know, leading buildings, you know, don't stand unless they're, you know, towers of Pisa, something like that. Right? Now, there's a book called Unseen Forces by Manly P. Hall. There you go. Unseen forces. It's probably a ten dollars, seven dollars, or something like that online. And page fifty-one, the three steps. There are three distinct steps in the attainment of wisdom, and all growth must take place in accordance with these steps. If man really desires to desires the boon of wisdom. He must be willing to accept it as the gods have seen fit to bestow it. The student must prepare himself for the influx of wisdom. This he does through right thought, right action, and right attitude. Right thought is the open mind ready to consider all things. A humble mind willing to receive the crumbs from the peace of the wise. A charitable mind condemning none but itself. A far slighted mind capable of seeing good in all things and ultimate good for all things. Right? So right thought. The concept of right thought in this three-step ladder of gaining wisdom is manifested in Noble Duali Telemore's thing. Telemore's thing and save yourself. Because once the Moors realize that everything that we need to manifest out there starts here, then we would, you know, start here and everything will manifest out there. But when you have individuals that take the position of, of stopping people's thinking and letting them become parrots of noble Juali, letting them become um, regurgitators, not knowers, they just say stuff because, well, you know, the Supreme whoever said it, but they never went to go check where he got that from or she got that from. And they're running with it, going all across the country telling people, oh, yeah, you know, naturalize and do all this stuff, when it's a fraud to begin with. That gets people away from the Moorish movement. There's been, there's been um, a few people this week that call because they bumped into Dirty more, right? And they were, once again, they were at the threshold of, oh yeah, nationality, whoo, here. Now we're gonna get, the, and then, you know, for, 
for, for the grace of Allah, we bumped into RV Bay, some tar thing, Canaan Land Mort or something like that, and all of us, and they got a number. Then we just call and ask a question for these Moors, because, you know, I mean, you know, we're all Moors, so I should be able to go with anybody to, you know, build. And then they talk to Kudro, and Kudro's not saying anything like what they're saying. Who they were just about to go in their pocket 1500 to go pay for some paper. <laughs> Still today, 1500 The same more as who, we, who we've been talking about telling people. Temple 13, Baltimore, naturalized more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Still pushing this perspective to get individuals to sell their self, because remember, law of retribution, if you stand in the way of somebody else's karma, you're going to get it. <laughs> so stay out of the way of people's stuff. Because, trust me, all these individuals, like this brother right here, sending stuff out, sending messages, oh yeah, our Supreme Grand Chief and all this type of stuff, guarantee you, he doesn't even know that they're sending him out there to go lie to people so that karma comes back on him. He's not coming back on them. That's why they're still around, chilling. Like 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 nothing nothing's wrong. Because they know right thought. Remember, all these individuals who call themselves heads, they know. They're very familiar with the depth of moral science. They're very familiar with with um um, if you're in adversity, you know, visualize Noble Juali in your mind and it'll get you out of stuff. Yes, sir. Right? And again, the three steps. Right thought. That's not something that you can be taught. You can't be taught right thought. That's something ingrained in you. If, 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 if Noble Juali is the figurehead, and in his own stuff, he said, okay, I brought you this, and I brought you this, and I brought you this, I brought you this, and this, and this, and this. And then everybody's going to forget about those stuff. And then listen to this guy over here, because, you know, his video had the Circle 7 going across the screen, and glitters, or whatever like that. And then the explosion of the fez, and then he was sitting there in a chair, a leather chair with those little circle things with the lines or whatever, you know what I mean? Chair just like what the prophet had, oh, we're going to listen to him. When, when, you didn't even consider anything that Noble Juali put out? And when challenged on these things, just like the same thing, because I didn't even, I didn't even put the other part, the other Moore's conversation, because he's where we're at. Right? So we already know that what the response would be as far as mores are concerned. Active mores, studious mores, faithful mores, right? True Moorish Americans, like Noble Juali talked about. We're immediately going to pick up on these frogs. Our thing is to put these concepts out there. Again, it comes back to, to um, people coming into this info and bumping into our stuff. And then building with Moors in Canaan land and realizing that there's something different about the information being put out by you Moors. It's, 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 it's more chill. It's not, you know what I mean, suit and tie and, you know what I mean, you got to stand up straight and, you know, your friend has to be, you know what I mean? It's, it's relaxed. It's comfortable. Come you know what I mean? Are. Come, no, you are. Come as you are. Be yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah, more. I just wanted to uh, go back. I think uh, the sister here had talked about saying that you have to be right. You have to be the right mind or the right thought to begin with. And I don't know if I can totally agree with that because I think that all of us have been of the wrong thought or mind at a period in our time. Right. I think what we have to do is have the ability to have a 
have a reasoning mind and to, and to see and to, and to look at our own, our own processes and our own experiences and understand that all of us have gone through the black, white, nigger right. stuff. And realize that, okay, at a point, we thought there was, a, we knew there was, a, all of us know something's wrong with that. Right. But nothing's changed from that. And so when you look at that paradigm, you realize there's never been a solution to that. And that was the whole plan. To make sure that we got stuck in there fighting something that, that could never that be solved. That could never be solved, exactly. And that that's where I think that the difference is that if you can hold up a, that, I, I can want to hear your response, but that, that, that I think that all of us have been in the wrong right. mindset. So right. I just wanted to disagree with that, or not disagree with, just put out my. my this guy's all right. Yeah. Um, I like that guy. No, but I, 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 think, I just, I just, I think that there could, should be a qualification of that yeah. because I think that all of us, because if we all had been in the right mind, then it would that process would have happened before us. And, our, and it would have been our parents who told us this, right? Because the prophet came 100 years ago, and like you continue to say through all of your, through all of your teachings that we're here because of the very nature of wrong thinking, right. and, and, and and people adhering still to, to the nonsense. Mm -hmm. Sorry, well, I don't know. Did you have? Something? Well, what I was going to say is that for me, reasoning is still a good way to say that. Like, Sorry, so that that get, sorry, just talk up a little bit more. It's okay. When people are talking about like, like university, living one, yeah. and they don't want to reach it quite well. But yet, if they're not in the frame of mind where your spirit, your mind, and your body is vibrating on a certain frequency, which I consider to be right thinking and being true to nature, no matter how much reasoning skills you have, it's not going to make a difference because you had this whole thing. You're right. I, 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 I think I agree with what you're saying. I was just, it just hit me in my mind. Like, and the reason why, for us here, I don't think that's a problem. Right, right. I just yeah. wanted to get it out there right, right, right. To, the, to, to the people online right. more than anything yeah. that, you know, because I think that what can happen is, what I sometimes sense too is that there's a frustration that happens because I think a lot of people want to get on this. Right. Mm -hmm. I think, a lot, you know, we were talking about this earlier today about we're looking at thinking about the last three you know, early days. Mm -hmm. Think in your mind about the, the people that were here this one, mm -hmm. the one before, and the one before. And both Van Cheek and I both realize that there have been different segments of people. Mm -hmm. during. Now, what uh, we said to each other was imagine if all those people mm -hmm. kept coming. Right. Like, this thing would be where it needs to be. Right, right, but it just right. seemed that we'll have uh, you know, Group A from this area come in to, yeah. this year. Mm -hmm. Group B from that area come in. This, Group C. So, but wait a minute. Where, where have all those people been? Because yeah. technically, what should be happening is slowly, as we're walking down the street, we should be seeing this sort of yeah. viral that's thing happening, well, where well, we start to. But, but, but that's not happening. And it feels like people, and we all know this. You know, today we're more, and then tomorrow we we're back around and we're and we're John Henry again, yeah. Yeah. right on the straw, saying yes, master, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so I just, um, I just want to make sure that. To let the people know that not to give up and to just keep studying, like the sister said, yeah. and to know that it's about coming together, and that's what it's always been. Right. We're coming mm -hmm. together under a national, under under under, under a nationality. Right. So what were you saying, Melissa? Yeah. Without the without the disagreement, without the fight, without the fight, without the fight. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But you know, what, actually, and this is sorry. And just, I think that that's, this is a much deeper subject than I think we're looking at because I think that it, it comes to a metaphysical thing where we're going to agree about this, then we're going to go out there and, just do, and, the and do the opposite. Right. Uh, and, uh, well, and, and I mean that, and I mean that on, on a metaphysical level where we go out there mm -hmm. and then, like, mm -hmm. I was listening to something, I can't remember where it was, last day about sort of, um, you know, just going along with stuff. Oh, yeah, it was some, yeah, I can't remember his company, but, you know, sort of just, you know, someone says something about, oh, you're a black guy, and you just sort of don't say anything. Yeah, just let it fly, pass. Just, just, just yeah. let it pass. Yeah. So, you, in a sense, you are, you are, 
agreeing to disagree. You're, you're agreeing to right. That's yeah. okay. Thank you. Yeah. That. Okay, that, yeah. No, I know, but yeah. I'm just saying that. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'll be honest. There are times that I have. Yeah. yeah. I'm not working with you know seven, eight euros, and we're talking about some stuff. We're talking about that guy, and I. But and I think, it, like you said too, though, I think that it's important to understand when to pick your battles. Too, right. Right. Within within this dynamic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the, and the prophet said that too. It's not mm -hmm. about going out there on your job and ha making these agitating speeches. No, right. no, no, right? right? So I think that, the, and that's where I think where the sister was saying too, about that reasoning mind and understanding, you know, when you're amongst your, your brothers, the, uh, the ums, the unawakened yeah. wars, yeah. you can sort of try and... The ums and the ums, yeah. The awakened wars and the unawakened wars. Yeah, he pointed that. That's Omar. That's Omar B. He coined that one. Ums, unawakened wars, and ams, awakened wars. It's love. When you're intersecting that, when you're in amongst your unawakened wars, you can sort of try and deal with them. But you'll find that those are the ones that are sometimes the most difficult to deal with. Right. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, just to add to it in regards to agreeing to disagreeing, that's when Taj Tariq Bey, like, certain things that he speaks on is in regards to connotative meanings and denotative meanings. Right. Okay. If we're going to agree to disagree, let's put the facts on the table first. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I mean, I say we're black. You say we're not. Right? Okay, what does black mean? First, that's the first question. Let's agree to disagree in regards to it. Okay, but let's put the facts on the table first. Right. So it's every aspect of in terms of the divine that we're speaking on, we have to know what we're speaking on. Mm -hmm. Because we have to agree to disagree with something. With something, to, right. Something. There has to be something of substance has to be. that that we're agreeing to disagree on. We're exactly. not just we're not just agreeing to disagree. Just avoiding everything no. so we can go over here, have some salad no. together or whatever like that. But we just, need to know, come to some type of I had one of these um um, Euro you no know, a European that I was having a discussion with at on my slave and he Talking about how he had been having a discussion with his neighbor mm -hmm. about how Jesus could have been a homosexual, just yeah. as an argument, yeah. right? And how she and the neighbor completely freaked out and we 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 had come together on that whole point about understanding that you know uh, show up or we did, didn't say but, but Jesus and a, a lot of the rhetoric that had been played, that put out about him, yeah. a lot of this was rhetoric in itself. It was a, like a lot of this stuff was made up. And then as I sort of progressed with him and talked about sort of the driver's license stuff, yeah. he was in agreement with it. And I was talking to him about the right to travel versus, you know, his driver's license. It was interesting, and this is where the agreement and the disagreement comes from, I think, because Taj said it best, that once start taking them outside of their comfort level, they start to profess their God. Right, right. right. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, you want to, you want to, you want to have, you want to have license because people, people, you know, we, we need to have people you know, and, yeah, driving, driving and, uh, and, following the rules. And, following the rules. And, I said, yeah, well, yeah. the rule is do care. I said, yeah, that's yeah. the rule. Right. And then I was talking to them about language, about driver's license mm. and those kind of things. And then I said, for example, nice. I said, nice. You might say this is something nice. I said, but back in the day, Nice meant idiot. Yes. He's like, well, but he goes, that's true, but, uh, you know, words can change. And over time, right. the word today, right. and I realized there that yeah. what happens is, and maybe this is why I wanted to get to that, you were holding your, your, your things out back and stuff, but where people then, what you do once they've been offered, like, uh, a falsehood to hold on to, mm -hmm. it's very hard to then dislodge them Detach. from yeah. that, well, to yeah. dislodge them from, from the illogical thinking that doesn't allow them, because mm -hmm. if they haven't had the process that there's only one meaning to the word, right. and everything else is connotative, yeah. then their their faith, their belief, which is in faith, right. tells them that, well, over time, this is this is what this it's evolved it into. Yeah. And yeah. that right there is the source of it. Right. Anyway, right. when you get into the, when you just mentioned that, they, they go back to hanging on to something that they feel comfortable on, for instance, religion. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks ago, a sister came to the temple, and she would say that there was a situation happened to her where doctors screwed up her body. Mm -hmm. But she wanted to get some help from a black organization. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the conversation went where I said, well, black organization can't help you. 
she got kind of emotional, and then she went back to her saving grace. She went back to her, 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 her Jesus. Confessing her God. <laughs> I said, but wait a second here. You just asked to get help from black people. But now you, you, you realize it's not going to happen. Now you're going to go profess to God. Why didn't that start in the beginning? Mm -hmm. right. right? So it's, it's, it's more a matter of on to play more is realizing that it's all on you in regards to how you think. I think that's what you that, 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 That's what you said. Yeah. It's right thinking. Yeah. That's it. Right. But I want to qualify that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But it yeah. all goes back to what she's talking about in your right thinking. Right. It goes back to who you are and how you think. And, and just like with Drew Ali, if he said, Ali. if he said, you know, true Moorish Americans, then there's fake ones. There's fake ones. If they man's put out a book talking about right thought, then obviously there's it's some wrong, wrong thought. Yeah. And 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 the it. things that are that are are um, contrary to to where we are or where we're trying to go, they have to be seen as foes in the battle. Right. You know, it's not just something to well, you know, just put it over here, deal with it later or whatever like that. That needs to be dealt with dealt with immediately. So we can get to that next level or that next stage, you know, that next step up, right? Um, the second of the three steps, right action, consists of proper care of the body, proper exercise, and a proper place in the great material battle of life. Man grows by contacting growing things. When he is able to contact all forms of life pleasantly with consideration, with the heart of the helper and with the mind of the student, he grows. Read that one again. Right action. Please, please, more. Right action consists of proper care of the body, proper exercise, and a proper place in the great material battle of life. Man grows by contacting growing things. When he is able to contact all forms of life pleasantly, with consideration, with the heart of the helper, and with the mind of the student, he grows. So again, everything that everything that we we um put from from paper to mind has to be put in reference with Nobu Juali. So right thought. No Jolly taught the morals to think. Think for themselves, save yourself. Right action. Live. Contact all forms of life pleasantly with consideration with the heart of the helper. That's the Rotarian complexion. That's the uplifting of fallen humanity. That's making sure that our brothers and our sisters um, um, are looked after because we know what their situation is we know that they need this remedy and the only way that they're going to get it is if we give it to them because there's nobody else out there you know including mars you know that is just gonna give it to them right like we said mars saying 1600 for this more saying you need to put down 1600 before you can be free. When Nobu Juali said this is free. And then all the international community back up that nationality is free. But people are talking about $1,600 to get four pieces of paper that say that you're a Moorish American. Just some Moors, crazy, dirty Moors. <laughs> Just. Um, Baltimore, Maryland, one of them. That's one sect of them that we know of for sure that charges, right? Um, and with regard to um, proper care of the body, proper exercise, proper place in the great material battle of life, right? Um, Nobu Juali pushed that concept with with his um, um with his remedies. That, you know, 
take my remedies, it'll cure of anything you're not born with. That's a big statement. If you take my remedies, it'll cure you of anything that you're, you weren't born with. But, you know, where's the Morris Manufacturing Company? You know, where's all his stuff that he was selling? All these herbs and mineral oil and tea and whatever else that he was selling. All the stuff is pretty much gone. And if it is out there, it's out there in, you know, some capacity of, you know, only these ones got it. You know what I mean? You got to do whatever to get it from them or whatever like that. When, you know, that should that should be something that, you know, has website like anything else that else out there selling. All right. You got a comment? Well, why he told him more. Everything I say is spirit. More is better heed. So I realized Because it's really Allah talking to you. That's right. <laughs> it's not the, the prophet. The spirit aspect of it is as much as, as we go back to the divine. It's much higher than anything Then what are, yeah, right. Yeah. Right, right. Right. But it's a divine, and also the same thing with, it's a divine and national. And national. Natural. Yeah. And national is subordinate right. to, to the divine. But it's just as divine. Fine, but I think right. that what I think because I think that nothing he said was said by accident. We right. Know that, but that, right. Right. So the whole point exactly. is so that but what has happened is this has still been reversed. Because we're still going about it by the national aspect for the most part, right? And that national part being all the all the writs and all that stuff. But really we we need to reverse that and be coming at it from the spiritual. But one can't exist without the other. That's why he said and and and, right. but, but what I'm still saying that I still think that to me it would be it would be like saying I gotta put my shoes on I gotta put my socks on before I put my shoes on. Well, right. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. So my shoes gotta be on, but I still gotta put my socks on first. Yeah. Right. Right. So yeah. that's where. But, but what I sense right. still is the way that the European has continued to co-opt the thing because they destroyed the spirituality of most of us. Still aren't connecting, aren't connecting spirit, directly to the, to the spirit. spirit, right? And once, because once, because you know, Dan was saying it too, that the spirit, the spirit realm now is active. Mm -hmm. And but we're waiting that time, there. yeah. Okay, in the letter for the brother, the dirty more said, yeah. he said that um, national religion, right? right? Nationals by religious right. Okay, so you, you're a national only if you have religious right, right? Yeah, that's the only way, that's the only right. way. As right. opposed to saying that this is a divine and national, national. right, it's and yeah. not mm -hmm. reverse, right? Exactly. Well, what he saying. didn't, but he didn't reverse it though. You can't, as you just mentioned, put on your socks before your shoes. What he's saying is that okay, put on your socks and your shoes. All right, which one do I put on first? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Third of the steps. Right attitude. Right attitude means that everything is undertaken in the spirit of love, truth, and a sincere. Yeah, I know that one. 
<laughs> thought he was going all the way, but you know. Right attitude means that everything is undertaken in the spirit of love, truth, and a sincere, unselfish desire to assist in making the world a better place in which to live. Right attitude means cheerfulness, hopefulness, and cooperation with all that is seeking to grow. It means consideration for all, even when they disagree with us, realizing that man must not work for man but for God, and that each has his separate account. Right. Uh, part of me agrees that the other part says that basically in the Quran is something that you should do for your fellow man, you do for Allah. Right. Right. So you definitely have to be looking for your fellow man. Right. So you can't be a selfish, selfish member. And and again, like with with. With um, with even addressing dirty morals, that's done out of love. That you know, there are brothers too, and they better t turn this thing around at their church because they're only the ones gonna get some. People have this idea that you know, um, if they do negative to, if they do negative as a more, that's gonna come back on the movement. Yeah, it's gonna do the movement. That's do with them. That's why they said them. Well, right? <laughs> Only them are getting some. Only they're gonna suffer. Like one of the more says, you know, I'm watching you suffer because you, you just don't want to get it. You get everything else. Understand everything else. Understand metaphysics. You know what I mean? Understand, you know, going into the astral planes, meditation. Yoga, spirituality, they understand all these things. It comes to nationality, everybody has blinders on. You know what I mean? All of a sudden they don't they can't they don't really get it. You know what I mean? The, that really is generally people because Masons know this already. Constant, it's constant damage control with morals. Exactly. In, terms in terms of always breaking stuff down always. to the common denominator. Always. Say that again. Yeah. 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 But that's okay. okay. Because that because now they can't say that they weren't told. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And when whatever does go come down the pike at them, yeah. we could say you know. Told you. <laughs> I mean, told you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You tried to warn y'all. Yeah. You know, I mean, prophet didn't warn y'all from 1913. You disregard what he said. Yeah. Okay, so now we're stepping up, mm -hmm. and we're saying now, you know, you're not Negro, black, colored. You better have a nationality. Well, you know, I don't know, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, something happened to them. Mm -hmm. You know, then they're gonna quit the call. <clears throat> you know, call the Moors when something happens. You know, get out of their stuff, and then you know, forget about the Moors till something else happens again. And who they gonna run to? You know, run to the morals again. And you know, because of we have a covenant, 
the Asiatic nation, you know, so brothers in adversity, sisters in adversity, you assist them regardless of what doesn't matter. So we're gonna it's not it's not it's not like when we were um, Negro black colored and then you help somebody and then you know they don't pay you back or whatever and then you're mad because oh they didn't oh I helped you fifty times and you never gave me back any help or whatever like that. No as far as I'm concerned on that. Because we know that, that these people are <laughs> They're out of it. They're out of it, right? And and there's there's like we're gonna uh, Amari, Amari brother Amari brought in something today, just to show that they know what's up. It's not even like it's not even like the so-called enemy, right? The white man is doesn't know. And he's ignorant to the facts that Moors are presenting or whatever like that. It's only our people. It's only our people. It's only the people above Mexico in the in the Caribbean islands that have this, you know what I mean, like shakiness about who they are. And they'll be everything. They got 50 things that they are. But everybody else has one thing that they are. Regardless of their religion, regardless of what kind of food that they eat, regardless of, you know, their mentality, regardless of whatever, they already know that, okay, you know, I have a nationality, it's tied to this land, it's tied to this culture, this language, this flag, you know, we have this guy that we recognize as whatever, and they stick with that. Regardless of whatever else anybody says, they stick to this thing that, that they know is a reality. And then our people stick to all these things that they know is a fiction. Like we, like we, we say, um, um, you know, the white man is the devil or whatever. He's so evil, whatever. But they have a picture of him on their wall talking about, you know, go to church on Sunday. Next but, question, but, who is the white man? <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, I see. Right. That's the part of studying it, that you have to question everything. Right. And, and for, for, um, for the new people that came in, today is dealing with, with not agreeing to disagree. Not taking the position of accepting the fraud just because, you know what I mean? This guy said he's buying, so all right, I'll accept the fraud so that, you know, he can buy. No, like, there ain't no fraud going on just for any, anything. You know what I mean? We'll deal with our own stuff ourselves if we have to. But the, the reality, the reality of, of um, you know, it's like, it's like people say, um, Moors, why do you use, you know, dictionary? Why do you use all these stuff created by the white man? That's the white man's stuff. How come you're using the white man's stuff? Oh, more, more means black, and, you know, white man made that up. That's a white man term or whatever, right? But... We're going to see where this concept of agree to disagree comes from. Because mainly it's Asiatics that use it. And mainly they use it with morals. In order to, to you know, again, um, get past dealing with the facts that the morals present. Because there's not, there's not too many morals out there who, are, who study that don't put it out. Majority of morals that study... They have no problem putting out the information so that people can be clear in in their thinking, right? Um, so this is um, this is from Wikipedia with regard to this thing. Economist Frank Fabozzi argues that it is not rational for investors to agree to disagree. They must work toward consensus, what's even the if name? they. Sorry, what's the name? Frank Fabozzi, F-A-B-O-Z-Z-I. Economist Frank Fabozzi argues that it is not rational for investors to agree to disagree. They must work toward consensus, even if they, even if they have different information. For financial investments, Fabozzi posts post that an investor's Overconfidence in his abilities, irrationality, can lead to agreeing to disagree. The investor thinks he is smarter than others. 
a related phrase normally reserved for informal and temporary arrangements in political affairs is the Latin phrase modus vivendi, M-O-D-U-S-V-I-V-E-N-D-I, literally way of living, and it is used in the same manner as agree to disagree. However, it can be viewed as thought terminate, a thought terminating cliche in certain circumstances. The phrase agree to disagree first appeared in print in 1770 when at the death of George Whitefield, John Wesley wrote a memorial sermon which acknowledged but downplayed the two men's doctrinal differences. Quote, there are many doctrines of a less essential nature. In these we may think and let think. We may agree to disagree, disagree, but meantime, let us hold fast to essentials. Right? Let us hold steady. Let us hold strong in the facts. Let's put the facts on the table before we start talking about agreeing to disagree with something because of some whatever. Let's put what's out there on the table so that everybody's clear why we have to agree. There's no need to disagree with truth. Truth is. There's nothing, there, there's nothing that anybody's going to present that is going to make truth not be that. It is what it is. Nobody brought us that. So once we agree and other people disagree, know that they're about to violate contracts. Just the fact that they want to go with disagree. Just the fact that, you know, it's like with the, with the debate stuff going on, right? They want to debate. They want to dick measure. They want to. They want to piss contest. They want to do that. Like whatever, whether it's whether it's whether it's put two guys together and then they get on the mic and they rap back and forth against each other or whatever, whether um, it's a debate where this guy has from this school of thought, this guy's from school of thought, let them talk for a couple of hours and see who has who gets the most applause at the end of whatever. Regardless of whatever, if the facts aren't on the table, what they're doing is irrelevant. And half the time, those people don't put any facts on the table. Half the time, when you have these hip-hop battles or whatever like that, those guys went home and they freaking wrote stuff. They're not freestyling nothing. <laughs> no, I'm saying with them though. But you know, but it's the same thing with the with the conscious group stuff. You know what I mean? They're not doing everything scripted. They're not dealing with any any anything that is gonna enlighten the people to the level of them changing their condition. Right. Yeah, right. Right? You know what I mean? Right stuff. Like, you know, with, um, and, yeah. Like, um, some more than, like, um, like, yeah. They do a lot of battle stuff, which, to me, like, I get information from it anyway, but I just don't like how they, you know, it's not really about the meaning of the person, like, whether it's the truth or not, it's more like, okay, you know, whether your knowledge, whether they accept it or not, but to me, they like the meaning of each other. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, you know, we want a battle? Yeah, let's get a European up here. Let's do the battle again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, battling each other. Right. Okay, the battles are good, but like, we need to have, you know, like... Yeah, information. Yeah, but it's not... Yeah, but but again, it, it, comes, it comes back to the thing of, of nationality gives you standards that you're going to go by. Right? That's why people say whatever it is that they want to say. But I wasn't debating Ali Muhammad. Like, I wasn't debating him. I wasn't trying to put my information against his information and see who's better. I was exposing that guy as a fraud. <laughs> There's people that's freaking arrested right now, in jail right now because of that guy. That he doesn't go check. There's people locked up right now. That he doesn't go check at all. He sold them those papers that got them arrested. 
locked up right now 2015 they're locked up right now and people still letting this guy come do debates and come talk on their camera and stuff like that that's really what's going on no different than um some negro coming and talking about why don't you mars use your stuff to get natural to out of prison what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about use our stuff to get Negro out of prison when he was talking against Morris his whole time or whatever? Right? How how is how is is um and again, you know, it comes back to one of those you know, he's one of the great debaters, you know what I mean? You know, I go up on stage, oh, talk perfect. stuff. Like, okay. Just going back to what the sister's talking about in regards to staging. If you're saying that, why don't you more use your stuff to get this brother out of prison? Wait a second. You look just like us as more. Why don't you go learn, right. learn that stuff? To and go get and get him out. Exactly. Like, exactly. What's up here? Like, which is it? Or why don't you use that black stuff that you guys are on right. and get him out? Use the black power him. stuff and get him out. Yeah. You mean, you know, you guys talk yeah, big or whatever. You got you know, shotguns and stuff okay. like that. Exactly. How about you do something so, like that? It's obviously in a roundabout way you're saying, okay, the Moorish information is is really where it's at. It's really where it's at. I just don't feel like like putting it out there. Yeah, I don't feel know, like you know my pockets. You know, I still gotta get back somehow. Right. Well, I understand it's not rocket science. Rocket science. Rocket science. Rocket science. Rocket science. Yeah, it's it's not. It's but yeah, but see, like look look at like if we look at at you know like what you said, it's not rocket science, right? To right thinkers, it's not rocket science. To people who have you know connections in their brain connected, not loose wires in their brain just like this, then yeah. But half half of the half of the people who claim to know their self, they don't know their self. They're fronting. Mm -hmm. Oh, because before I was talking to this um, guy, right? Um, I was like saying, like, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a teacher, but I'm like saying, yeah, well, you know, I hear what you're saying, too, but I'm saying, like, more is there on the book because I'm like, recognize the movement, mm -hmm. recognizing them, basically have, like, documents for this government. Right. That it's legal. Right. I mean, just by that alone, it should tell you that. Recognized by them, which you know, that's unheard of. Right. And just like you know, whether you are, like you say, you agree to disagree on who in this history is more yeah. accurate, or you know what I mean? That's debatable if you want to say that, but you can't debate if it's on the book. You right. Know what I mean? Right. And you're I, just not hearing that. You're just right. Like, but but uh, and, and again, it it, 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 it comes down to it comes down to that thing again that that when when there's when Moors get challenged by other schools of thought, right, and that you know our stuff isn't whatever, their stuff is whatever, like that, right? Know that those people don't have a nationality, so they can't talk. If you don't have a nationality, you can't talk. You're mute. If if any of these conscious people want to come talk to Moors, they better go get a lawyer. Don't be coming and come talk to Moors like you know. What I mean, we have to listen. Because we're not, we're not on the same plane. We don't have to listen. We accommodate those people because, you know, hopefully we can put them onto something. But we don't have to. We can turn our back on those people if we want to. We're the ones that have the nationality. They don't. They're the ones trying to pretend that what they think is a nationality, what they think is a flag and all that type of stuff is legitimate. When we already know that that's a fraud. Just like you're saying, show me in the books. Show me in the books where the Hebrews did something with regard to anything relating to law that's on the books. We can go check the books and see that there's Moors written in there, Turks written in there, they got treaties with Moors. Find me some Hebrew tr Israelite treaty with somebody, anybody. Find me find me a Hebrew Israelite and a Hebrew Israelite that have a treaty together. <laughs> they can't, it's, it, it, there's, there's no facts. And once, and once we, once we, get them to that point of oh, about to be checkmate or oh, now they want to toss the <laughs> talk about start over <laughs> i just bumped the table or whatever right i think we have to be cautious too about the fact of the distraction right i think that that's something that 
that you were touching on about the debate stuff, right? You ain't going there to debate anyone. You're going there to set the facts. You just set the facts and the truth out there, right? So I think we have to be careful, all of us in here, as more we're getting caught up. The prophet said it best of the uh, agitating speeches on right. the workplace and whatever. Right. All that kind of stuff is meant to get you off of your stuff. Right. Off right? your game. Off your game. Right. So remember that a lot of the times, I think he also said to him, and one of the things that I think I wanted to get, remember his uh, 100, his uh, 107, I think it was 107, his uh, oral statement yeah. that he had out there. Go over those again. Because a lot of that stuff, I think, oh, is very succinct. Yes. Succinct yes. to what, what is going on. That basically, you know, you can show the brother where it's at. If he does, doesn't want to, then turn then, away. Hey, you know turn I mean? away. I mean, that's why when you were talking about sort of never turning these guys away, yeah. I sort of was going to object a bit because we will help them, but at a certain point, if they come back again, and they have... Yeah, yeah, eventually, you know, it's like, yeah, what are you going to do, nationalize or... Thing, then yeah. basically you're on your own. Right, you know, go, right. Go through the learning for yourself, so um, I think that just has to be put out there, right? Yeah. Well, it's a matter of if, as I said, you and also you, the genuineness. Yeah, you put the well. truth out there, and once they find out the truth, there's one or two reasons that people Come back. One is because they're evil, or two is because they, didn't, they know they're wrong, or three, they're, they're actually there to sort of subvert the movie. Like, there you go. Because the truth is out there. Right. And the truth is the truth. Just as you mentioned, um, evil, we're going to go back to unseen forces for quick fast. Um, the sins of the flesh. So long as any of the following traits are left in his nature, Man has no right to seek first-hand knowledge on spiritual subjects. <laughs> so long as any of the following traits are left in his nature, her nature, man has no right to seek first-hand knowledge on spiritual subjects. This does not mean that he should not study, but he must keep away from occult activities that will work upon his super physical nature and organisms. All these vices build and strengthen the power of the dweller. And the dweller is the lower self. Right? All these vices build and strengthen the power of the dweller. And remember, if any of these vices or traits are in the nature of man, man can't seek first our knowledge. What on traits, spiritual subjects. Oh. Yeah, this is, what we're, this is what we're going to go now. Excitement, dishonesty, selfishness, attachment, emotionalism, <laughs> egoism, <laughs> sulkiness, argument, demands, contention, greed, anger, sorrow, passion, dislikes, hate, fear, lust, lying, pride. All students are subject to these failings. That is to be expected, and there is no special disgrace in having them, for only the gods are without fault. Perhaps even they err sometimes. But until these problems have been honestly faced and worked out, no one has the cosmic right to dabble in those things which lie beyond the veil that divides this world from the invisible. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> like for for example, like um 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 clansmen get excited to put people on the crosses and lynch people. So the excitement could be used. In, you know, I mean, in, in in different ways, right? Now, many of many of our people, especially out in this jurisdiction, we've um, presented to them the fact that you know it's 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 wise to have a nationality. It's wise to study and know the law so that. The lawbreakers, who people consider to be, um, please, please, who people consider to be um, 
the law or whatever, right? We have to the the individual that we we put people onto nationality and birthrights, right? We put them onto nationality and birthrights. We tell them have a nationality in order to protect themselves. They have have. Um, our people have neglected things that Moors have said, right? And assume that that people violating them are are you know um, dealing with these vices that we talked about. You know that they're racist or something like that. They got some ego problem abuse of power or whatever when it's really the people it's really the people that that give them the power to violate them it's not that they're being violated it's like I heard somebody say um, um, revenge and justice aren't the same so you can't you can't be in wrong but then want to go sue some highwayman because they did something. If you were in the wrong, if you try to go after them, that's revenge. That's not justice. And uh, you're gonna get your stuff back as soon as you try to go after them. Because it's not the same. If if you're seeking revenge against somebody, that's not justice. So let's see if you were actually, if you actually were like. And then you want to pull out a nationality card talking about, oh, I'm sovereign, you don't have no jurisdiction. Well, you just ran over 50 light posts back there, <laughs> right? Like, you you don't, you can't talk about you're sovereign right now, right? So, I just wanted to read a little bit of this article from um, the weekend of January 16th to 18th, 2015, uh, Metro newspaper, and the article is, G20 tribunal. Remember how far long ago G20 was? When they, okay, they still having tribunals yeah. about that still, right now, <laughs> right? G20 tribunal sees police emails back in kettle. Emails from senior Toronto police officers indicate they supported an officer's decision to kettle, quote unquote, hundreds of people during the G20 weekend. A, discipline, a disciplinary tribunal heard Thursday. Quote, Mark, I get it and support what we were doing. This is a level beyond you and I. And I read an email presented at the hearing from former staff superintendent Jeff McGuire to superintendent David Mark Fenton on June 28, 2010 hours after Fenton ordered mass arrests. So for people who don't know, just go to G20 in Toronto, and then you'll go and you'll see them um, kettling or corralling the people. And then people mad because, you know, where do you get the authority to do that and whatever like that. When six months prior to G20, all the national newspapers, all the, um, um, transit stations or whatever had their big poster right with all the notice on it you know notice to the public and then they let people know these are the lines or whatever like that this is the jurisdiction that we're going to be in if you come downtown on this day during g20 you're going to get your ass kicked told people and everybody said whatever they're not gonna do nothing and went down there to go march protest picket whatever else that they did people um just walking for a coffee or whatever people just out there walking their dog got caught up in some concentration camps that they had down at um where was it that they had the was it on the docks somewhere that they set up was that done that? South of London. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So they had this, um, so they set up this, you know, um, 
concentration camp or whatever that they were taking people and housing them in for days, weeks after the G20 stuff. And then all these people started suing, you know, police and whatever like that. Same thing that we're talking about. You can't be in error and then talking about <laughs> we're going to sue those guys. Because they were in error in the first place by not adhering to the notice. But even though a lot of like, uh, World War II or something like that, they kept people. I'm not even sure what they were using, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know I know that they were I know that they were um prior to, to the G twenty they were um doing um training with with the LA riot police and stuff like that to prepare for you know whatever is gonna go down or whatever. Right? Um Fenton is charged with unlawful arrest and discreditable conduct in relation to his role in ordering mass arrest and kettling, a police control tactic that involves corralling and boxing in a group of people. During the G20 summit, Fenton is the most senior officer charged under the Police Services Act in relation to G20 policing. The email submissions presented by Fenton's defense counsel just one day after the hearing officer ruled Toronto Police Chief Bill Blair will not have to testify came following an intense moment in the courtroom. Fenton's defense counsel, Peter Bratti, was interrupted when he began to ask Fenton questions about whether any superiors criticized his decision to make mass arrests. I have an objection, said lawyer for the complainants. If I understood your ruling correctly, your ruling was that the evidence of Deputy Chief and Chief Blair was irrelevant. So this goes into what we tell the Moors with regard to um, um, taking a stand against so-called police violating people's rights, that the ultra-virus statute is not going to protect them. Their boss is not going to stand up for them knowing that they violated something or somebody. Their boss is going to throw them under the bus. Just like police chief and deputy police chief is doing to all those officers right now that were involved in that corralling thing. All of them are taking the position of, well, the boss said, and then as soon as they say that, oh, sorry, we don't want to hear nothing about that. We're talking to you right now. We're talking to you, officer. That's why they do it in the tribunal, and it's not happening in the court. So if you do it in court, then you're going to have to subpoena everybody from the top all the way down has to come because these people violated people's rights. But then again, if they're not dealing with people, they're dealing with persons who are corporations, then nobody got corralled, nobody got their rights violated. This was just part of you know, business. And being that it's business, they have a tribunal to deal with it. And then and then the people think that because they're in a tribunal that, oh yeah, this is this is a lawful process going on and yeah, they're gonna be responsible for something when the tribunal is run by their boys or whatever, who you know, isn't gonna it's not gonna mean anything. If somebody's guilty or whatever like that in that tribunal, it's going to be nothing. It's not going to have any effect on their quote-unquote police service record, pension, nothing like that. They're still going to get everything that they got. But it's all because of the people. One, not recognizing that these people gave them notice, stay the hell out of downtown when we have this G20 because we will be corralling people, kettling people, whatever it is, whatever that we do, we're going to be doing it. Not before it happened, I didn't even know really. I just saw, I saw so much police, more than people walking down the street, and like, I'm out of here. There's literally, there was so much in their right here. Yeah. There were more than people walking around on the street. Yeah. You know, downtown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were yeah. big, were the more city, you know, the more than. Right. And, and, then, and then keep in mind that that 
Um, the people, 90% of the people who were so-called in riot gear or whatever are people who applied to be police for that weekend. They're not real police. Like, they weren't people who were on the force. They were individuals like you just, they just said, hey, we need 500 people, put up a poster. Whatever 500 people came, here's a helmet, here's a baton, here's a baklava or whatever. So you cover yourself, make sure nobody sees your face or whatever like that, and go out there and kick some people's asses. <laughs> right? And then people are going to talk about they want to sue police when those guys weren't even no police. Those were mercenaries that they hired. And not even really mercenaries, just everyday people. And I only know because I know people who went for the thing. Yeah, they <laughs> and they and they said, yeah, you know what I mean. They said, you know, yo, this thing is, this is the stuff going on. You know what I mean? They said, come down. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was the time right there, right? Um. Right, so um, now another thing that you're going to do your research on is this, this individual by the name of John Wesley, where this agree to disagree thing came from. John Wesley, and um, you're going to look up his article, letter, book, whatever they, you know, they call it so much things, but um, he has this, um, this um, say a book called Thoughts Upon Slavery, because um, John Wesley was an abolitionist so this is why he can talk stuff like you know we we'll agree to disagree but let's stick to the essentials because abolitionists know what's up they don't play you know there's different kinds of people and skin color stuff like that they play everybody's equal right so in this um book that he has uh this is um one of the things in the book uh, this is page nine the foolies F-U-L-I-S, are a numerous people, the soil of their country represented as rich, affording large harvests, and the people laborers and good farmers. Of some of these fully blacks who dwelt on the river Gambia, William Moore, the English factor, gives a very favorable account. He says, they are governed by their chief men, who rule with much moderation. Few of them will drink anything stronger than water. Being strict Mohammedans, the government is easy because the people are of good and quiet disposition and so well instructed in what is right that a man who wrongs another is the abomination of all. They desire no more land than they use, which they cultivate with great care and industry. If any of them are known to be made slaves by the white man, they all join to redeem them. They not only support that they are old or blind or lame among themselves, but frequently supply the necessities of the Mandingos who, who they were distressed by famine. The Mandingo, said Mons, brew are rigid, are rigid Mohammedans drinking neither wine nor brandy. They are industrious and laborious, keeping their ground well cultivated and breeding a good flock of cattle. Every town has a governor and he appoints the labor to the people. The men work the ground designed for corn, the women and girls the rice ground. He afterwards divides the corn and rice among them and decides all quarrels if any arise. All the Mohammedan Negroes constantly go to the public prayers twice a day, there being a priest in every village who regularly calls them together. Some authors say it is surprising to see the attention and reverence which they observe during their worship. So in, in this book that he has about the thoughts upon slavery, he's talking about in the continent where um, there are dark-skinned people, that they are strict Mohammedan, right? In code, saying that they're morals. Which leads us to the article that Brother Amari brought in today. 
Saturday, January 17th, um, Toronto Star. And the article is called, The Lethal Queen Who Changed the World. The Lethal Queen Who Changed the World. By Jennifer Hunter, star columnist. Isabella of Spain had a major impact on world history. She funded Christopher Columbus's voyages leading to the discovery of the New World and instituted the Brutal Inquisition. Yeah. Okay. We talk about Brutal Inquisition. Two questions. Who was she being brutal to? What is Inquisition? Right. Let's put it out there. Okay, for, 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 because when we, what, what we have to realize is that everything that these people do in this jurisdiction that's relative or um, in consideration of the Moors is because of the Moors. It's because of us why they have this article in here. You shouldn't know, just happen to just all of a sudden just want to write an article about Queen Isabella. Just because. This is Toronto. What does Toronto have to do with Isabella and Spain and all that stuff other than the fact that there's Moors here? There's no reason for them to write this article. No different than um, when the when the brother in um, New York or whatever hatcheted the people, right? And then the, the paper had a more on the cover. Talking about, yeah, the Muslims of something or whatever, terrorists or whatever like that. But they have a picture of a more there. They're not doing that just because, you know, they want to sell papers. They're trying to tell, send signs to these people. Who are who are absent-minded of who they are and their history, but then again, you know, as as we go through some of the article, you'll see that they're not really putting it in the proper perspective so that the people can really know what they're talking about, right? They're putting it in the perspective where it's just an article about you know. The lethal queen who changed the world, you know, it's part of the Sunday paper, page E3 or whatever like that, and, you know, that's it. You know, majority of people who are Asiatic, they even read this thing, right? I found Isabella a tough and unsympathetic character. I find her un unsympathetic as well. But one of the challenges of writing about a person in another time or place is to try to see the world as they saw it. I had to imagine what it was like to be a person living in the Middle Ages. It was a fascinating exercise and quite troubling because of the issues she dealt with, her conflicts with the Jews, the Muslims, and the Christians. You must remember that Spain was a Muslim country in 711, conquered by the Muslims after they had taken control of North Africa. The Spanish always felt that they had to go to war to maintain their religious faith, to reclaim it from Islam. Isabella's feeling was her family was trying to regain the land the Muslims had taken. She felt she was completing a reclamation of her country. There is no, re there is no question how horrifying the Inquisition was and what it meant in Spain, and it went for and it went on for 300 years after she died. The thought of persecuting people who had other religions is hard to swallow. She wanted everyone to share her point of view or leave. From her perspective, she believed their mortal souls were in danger if they weren't truly Catholic. In an era where we value religious tolerance, her behavior is disturbing. One of the important things in understanding Isabella is that she is very Spanish. She uses, she sees herself as a Spaniard, which is, which is 
two different jurisdictions, right? Spanish aren't Spaniard, right? She sees herself as a Spaniard, but she is half Portuguese. And it was the Portuguese who were adventurous world explorers going around the coast of Africa to India. She inherited that desire for overseas exploration and travel from her Portuguese mother. One of her relatives was Henry the Navigator, Prince of Portugal. So she's Portuguese, right? She's truly Spanish. In the Middle Ages, people were much more religious than they are today. Isabella was a transitional figure from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance. The fall of Constantinople in 1453 marked the end of the Middle Ages, and that was just after Isabella was born. She straddled the Middle Ages and modern history. She was doing everything against female gender typecasting. She was a tough, hard woman. She defied the expectations of all men and women around her. In lots of ways, her husband, the king, Ferdinand, had a kind of genius of his own, a dark genius. It is easy to understand why Machiavelli mentioned him so frequently in The Prince. Ferdinand and Isabella had an effective collaboration. The relationship with Isabella allowed Ferdinand to have someone who, who could be a foil for him, and she had someone who could do the dirty work. Their kingdom was an amalgam, of separate kingdoms, Castile and Aragon, and there were a lot of administrative problems and cultural differences. They called it Spain, but it wasn't the Spain we know. It put together much of the Iberian Peninsula except for Portugal and the Kingdom of Granada. Theirs was a passionate match in some ways. Ferdinand was unfaithful to Isabella, and that caused a lot of strain and stress, but part of that was because Isabella loved him so much. And then it goes on and on, right? But the point of bringing this up is to show that we Moors don't have to prove anything to anybody. We don't have to agree to disagree because we're the ones that have the facts. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not um, content in accepting that somebody who calls herself Negro, Black, Colored, Ethiopian, African, or whatever like that, doesn't have a nationality, has more facts that they could put on the table. Uh, so somebody who just came into more science yesterday will school somebody who's been saying that they're a scholar writing books or whatever, but they're saying they're black. Right? Because as, as, as Moors who have open minds, just like the brother said, it's not rocket science to trump these people. It's not, it doesn't take 500 years of study to get this. It's real, it's real simple. It's real basic. If a child could get this, adults should be able to get this. Like, adults should be able to get this. It shouldn't be anything that we're pulling teeth of people to proclaim their nationality. And the fact that we have to pull teeth with people lets us know what our people did to them. There's our people that have them in that mindset that, you know, this fiction is real. You know, even though nobody else calls itself colors on the planet, but, you know, us being black is real. You know, um... You know, they mention Muslim in the article. Now, all the Asiatics, you know, and, oh, it has nothing to do with us. They're talking about some Arabs, pale Arabs, and whatever like that. They're talking about terrorists, Taliban, and all that stuff. When, you know, it's, 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 all it takes is for them to study one year before slavery, and they'll bump into Moorish history, 700 years ago. But they never go there. They always stop at, you know, oh yeah, they put us on the boat, and then, okay, what about before going on the boat? Like Drew Ali said, before you became a slave, you had a name. 
before you became a slave, you had nationality. Before you became whatever, before you were subjugated, you were tied to something. How come you are going back to the stuff that you're tied to? How come it's, it's you know, a battle to accept the fact that we're more? Why is it so hard to accept the fact that we're more from our people? You know, like we said, we're going to, in um, February, we do March, Moorish History Month. We don't do Black History Month. We correct black history. And we're going to have Moors from all over doing Skypes just to put it out there that, you know, we don't prove nothing to anybody. All we got to do is present and leave it alone. Present it, leave it alone. Whoever's going to get on, whoever's going to see, whoever's going to wake up and say, oh, you know, that, that's interesting or whatever. Let me check this out further. They'll do that. We don't need to you know, dangle stuff to get them to come get down with this. They'll get down with this if they want to be free. If they don't want to be free, then hey, they'll continue to suffer. Right? Um, there was a incident at Dufferin Mall. Video exonerates man accused of pushing woman down stairwell. Angwe Pal Deng, A N G U E I P A L D E N G, has since been released from jail. An acquaintance of of his from the same an acquaintance of his from the same area of South Sudan who has not seen him for several years said she believed he came to Canada about a decade ago. The woman who did not want to be identified said that he has had difficulty becoming accustomed to the way of life in Canada in part because of a language barrier. He's a young man who has struggled with life here and wants to go home, blah, blah. It appeared to be a disturbing case of random brutality. Inside Dufferin Mall last March, a young man was believed to have pushed a perfect stranger, 82-year-old Maria Ferreira, down a stairwell, sending her tumbling violently to the ground or so testified three people at the assault trial of Angwe Pal Deng, a 25-year-old Sudanese man who speaks an African language called Dinka and lives in and out of shelters. Through a translator in Old City Hall Court last month, Pal Deng denied the allegation, saying he inadvertently made contact with the elderly woman while gesturing for her to pass. But it is the word but it was the word of a culturally challenged and unsophisticated man against a sympathetic elderly woman claiming he pushed her and two independent witnesses backing her up, Ontario Court Justice Melvin, blah, blah, blah. What do you notice about this article? How come they didn't call him a black man? How come they identified him as a Sudanese man? Right? Why did they call him black? Like how they do with everybody else around here that, you know, claims that they know their self, claim that they have, they came from Africa or whatever. He came from Africa. Sudan's in Africa, right? Okay. So Sudan's in Africa. They call him an African they call him a Sudanese man. They call him a young man. But then when some one of these people out here do something, who say that they came here from Africa or whatever like that, they call them black man. How come they didn't call this guy black man? Because nationality. The power of nationality. The fact of nationality. And if you go around to the newspapers, right, all the different articles that deal with something happening to people from Africa, they never call them black people. They always call them by whatever country it is that they come from, always. There's never ever a time where they classify these people as African something. All of our people that claim to 
be African and get labeled and classify themselves as African Canadians, Sudanese people don't get called African Canadian. Um, Ethiopians don't get called African Canadian. This thing is only happening to our people. This is only happening to individuals who refuse to accept the fact that nationality is the order of the day. And once, once we start doing like what the prophet said, Nobudrali told the Mars, go and redeem your people. Why do we have to redeem them? Because our people have been sold out by their own. Our people have been completely sold out by their own, where their own doesn't even care about them. Our people have have taken the position of, you know, um, um, they're conscious, and you know they're gonna fight the system, and you know we're gonna topple this system, or whatever. But they're getting grant money from the same guys who they're saying they're fighting. Are you getting grant money from the same Europeans, same white man giving them grant money? And then they don't have anything going off in their head about, hold on a second. So we want to kick white man's ass, but the white man's giving us all the stuff to kick his ass with. You don't think there's a problem with that? You don't think somebody's setting you up? <laughs> right? And then they have their own back in that stuff. Oh, well, yeah, you know what I mean? Take the grant money. Take the grant money and then use it to whatever, do the, whatever, build the hood up or whatever. I ain't taking no grant money, whatever. Half people who get grant money, they pocket grant money. Half the people who get grant money, community doesn't see it. Community has no has no acknowledgement. Community has no knowledge that this individual got fifty million. They just see a building go up and they say, oh, hey, we got something in our community now. We're going to go there or whatever like that. Right? No different than um, um, prayer palace pastor or whatever. Right? Rape some girl or something like that. And then everybody's still, you know, still flock in there. Still. Yeah, oh, yeah. Big news. Big news. But, you know. You Negroes ain't Negroes ain't gonna be, you know what I mean? Y'all gonna listen to that? You know, the white man, the white man said it, right? When these people are totally being sold out. Um, there's a paperback by Dr. John Henry Clark on Amazon called "Africa and the Discovery of America." You're gonna want to get that. It's only 13 bucks just so we can you know just so we can be sure about what's being what's being put out by you know our so-called black leaders historians scholars whatever because you know we already know John Henry Clark told came out told these people that blacks not a nationality Negroes not a nationality stop playing games about that's your identity. It's on YouTube. Probably only has, you know, a thousand hits or something like that because, you know, nobody's not watching that. They don't watch all the black crap that he's talking about. But when he's talking about blacks not a nationality and Negroes not a nationality and Africans not a nationality, you need to identify yourself with, you know, a nation or whatever like that. Oh, yeah. Black scholars ain't listening to that part of his, his stuff. They're going to listen to the black crap. That's all they're going to hear. You got Comment? Question? Yeah, John Henry Clark. Africa and the Discovery of America. And then um, there's also there's also an article that you're going to research called Actually, we'll just read some of this because it applies. 
If anybody has any questions, you can put those up. Um, yeah. Mainly it's that, the whole, yeah, because the... Are they, if, if you know, well, what I want to know, I'm not for sure, are they, they're not right? No, major, ma if, if you're, if you're an Asiatic and you're in a lodge, your property, I don't care how much degrees that they say that they got, there's, there's nobody who's gonna, gonna, um, be dark skin that's in a lodge that's going to have the same degree of information that the Europeans have. Matter of fact, um, one of the Moors in um, Colorado, uh, Brother Bokari, he was a Prince Hall. And he was on Prince Hall before he got down with this. And he said that when he was in Prince Hall, their lodge looked like crap or whatever. And then when you go to the European lodge for their annual whatever, those guys have the carpet and, you know, the painted walls or whatever like that. And, you know, the Prince Hall guys never even, you know, considered, well, hey, if Mason is about brotherhood, then the Europeans got carpeted stuff or whatever. <laughs> right? Shouldn't, shouldn't the Europeans be assisting the other Masons to make sure that they have some stuff that's lining up with you know what I mean? What they got? But no, they don't go there. Because their property. Because really the, the, the history of masonry is about them. But they're taking the position of it's some European thing. They need to go to England and get the authority and a charter so they can be masons over here or whatever like that. When all they have to do is proclaim their nationality. They got the same stuff on. No, they have, they, well, I mean, first of all, they're not told. And then second of all, they have an oath. So the little that they know, they can't tell. But they don't really know anything when they're in the lodges as, you know, as black men, black lodge, you know, Prince Hall or whatever, black masons and all that. They don't know nothing. They're just practicing rituals that their God taught them. But they, they don't they don't have the, the foundation of what it is. Like how the Europeans have. I mean that's why that's why um <laughs> that's, <laughs> why, <laughs> that's, why, <laughs> that's why we got <laughs> the Masonic Gate. <laughs> right, that's why we got the Masonic Gate distributed in Canaan land now because Amor took it on himself to make sure that he puts out, puts out a newspaper, right, talking about this in the right perspective so that these so-called black masons could proclaim their nationality, stop playing around like they're masons. There's no need to, you know what I mean, they don't need to get down with that to be, to get their little benefit. You know, like how they say, you know, join the lodge and then you're going to come into brotherhood and now you know everybody's your brother we have secret handshakes and stuff like that you go to the bank you just give the secret handshake and oh you're gonna get the loan for sure nope. no it ain't really happening you're not getting no loan or whatever <laughs> and they're still gonna be masons knowing that they're not getting no loan because they're a mason they're at the ring or whatever they're in the ring or whatever you know and get some props they're not getting no props nobody's respecting that crap that they're pushing you know? Yeah, we'll pull a shack. You know what I mean? Right? Right? I'm playing games. You know? Right? Um, so there was this article. Peace of Africa found under Alabama. Peace of Africa found under Alabama. Geoscientists have identified a chunk of Africa stuck onto the southeastern United States. So we just leave it right there. More has been telling people that this is Africa. 
So when the European talks about, you know, go back to Africa. <laughs> we're already here. <laughs> we're already here. There's nowhere to go back to because we're in Africa already. I also heard that um, California, when they met up with it, it was like a big chunk of Africa. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, when you, when you take the, the trusty. You get the trusty facts, right? You get the trusty facts, and then you just put the, just cut out all the pieces and put it together. You clearly see that Africa and America are relative. And then the Atlantic Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean was really a river and nobody really taught them more is that there was a great earthquake that created the Atlantic Ocean. Now, what type of earthquake, well forget what type of earthquake, what type of demonic stuff were people doing for Allah to put judgment on them with an earthquake so powerful that's going to create an ocean? An ocean was created from an earthquake. What were people doing? What low vibration were they on that the most I had to say, you know what? <laughs> I have to separate this stuff. I have to put a put something between you people. Separate you from each other. Because of the madness that you people are doing. Go to your room. <laughs> right? And the room's like way down there. Right? Okay. Well, maybe think we're gonna spend Oh yeah, well, you know, again, you know, we talk about, you know, prophecies of Nobu Juali and, you know, he said some stuff and stuff manifested. Well, you know, he said that there's going to be an earthquake that's going to split the United States in two. I mean, all the other stuff that he said manifested, so, <laughs> you know, Nobu Juali, he, he said, you know, cold weather is going to be in the south, warm weather is going to be in the north. What we got today? 40 degrees or something like that? So, yeah, last week with minus 50. Last week's minus 30 something. It's four degrees today. And then Atlanta has snow or whatever. People don't even not drive. Right? And it's not even no snow like what we got. They got like 0.5 inches of snow. People, 500 car pile up on the highway. People panicking about, oh my God, the blizzard or whatever. And they don't even got nothing. They got like this much snow. Talking about problems they got. They can't drive. They don't got snow tires and stuff like that, right? So it's possible, you know what I mean? It's possible, but you know, the the it's like the more the more that that we um the more that we violate national and divine principles, the more stuff's about to come. And you know, again, you know, it's only gonna happen to our people because our people are the only ones that you know, think think spooky about divine things. You know, our people are the only ones that that have this idea of you know uh, a, a, a savior can't come to us personally. We have to go feed off somebody else's stuff that they got, which is for them. When we have our own stuff, but we don't want our own stuff. We have our own nationality, but we don't want that. We want to go take somebody African nationality. Right? We have our own prophet, but we don't want him. We want to go worship whoever else out there. We want to make up people, say that they're prophets, that they came to save us or whatever. You think Mosai doesn't know that you guys messed in the head? We really think that is not going to come back to us, right? And, you know, we go to church the most. Every Sunday we're there, so, you know, Jesus loves us more than everybody else. You know, and then half the people around here who say that they're Christian, they don't call that guy Jesus. Because they're speaking some other language and, you know, they don't call him that. And our people are lost, right? Peace of Africa found under Alabama. Where, where it's like the, the, 
the individuals who found that, the geoscientists who found that, are looking at that like they need to go to the Smithsonian or whatever, talk to people who have meetings or whatever like that. They need to you know, go check their graphs and go check all these maps that they had, ancient, ancient stuff, pulling out stuff to make sure, yo, is this real or whatever like that. If this is real, oh man, this is big news. But you're not telling no Negroes about that. Oh, that that's black history info. Africa is under Alabama. That's black history information. That bet you they're not going to talk about it during black history month. Guaranteed. Why? Because as soon as Negro black color people wake up and they realize who they are and that this is their land and they always been in their own land, people are going to start dying out here. Because they start realizing that people have been playing them. Right? Right? Arabic name. I'm pretty sure. Right? Pretty sure. Right. Alabama. Right? And we know Ba. We know Ba is Kemetic. We know Al is, is Arabic. We know that there was a connection between, you know what I mean, these these um, different land masses, you know what I mean, trading with each other and all that stuff, but, you know, the people don't want, don't want freedom. They love slavery. Yeah. Everything is proof of the Moors' existence. Because there is no such thing as African, because Africa is synonymous with Moor. There's no such thing as black people, because black has a hyphen, a hyphen, Moor. They took out the A and the hyphen or whatever more or whatever like that. So people call us all black, think that's something. Right? All we have to all we have to do is is continue to to beat these people in the head with facts. Right? Eventually you know, they'll come to consciousness eventually. You know what I mean? Right? Right? We're we're beating them conscious we're beating them conscious just because we we have the truth back so you know why not especially especially knowing that you know everybody came and told them you know they honor Ivan Van Serum and all that you talk about Moors you know books about the Moors and all that they honor Khalid Muhammad he came out and said that he's a Moor right all you Nuwapians honor Dr. Malachi York. They hold him in high reverence and all that stuff. He came out told them that they're Moors or whatever. Put out Circle 7 and all that. Had Nobu Jwali and the Holy Tablets and all that. But they didn't want to get down with this. Marcus Garvey studied with Deuce Muhammad Ali, who's a Sudanese Moor. He's not African. He's a Moor from the Sudan. He wore a Fez all the time. From over there. But not nah, Fez belongs to Turks. So, you know, they're not going to get down with this. All right. I mean, they don't have to. Don't get mad when more say, oh, you got, what do you say, ticket? You got a ticket? Oh, you got IRS or whatever, CRA trying to do something? Oh, yeah. Oh, you need help from the Moors all of a sudden. Now, now you want to come to class or whatever because you got some letter in the mail. All right, we'll come. We'll school you. You know what I mean? We'll school you. But you better have a reply after you send the stuff that we give you and you send that to them. You better know what to do after because they're going to reply. <laughs> they will reply. You know what I mean? It's like people say, you know, yeah, well, just give it to them. Yeah, we give it to them and get their ass kicked, and then they're going to come blaming the Moors. Well, the Moors did it. No, you did it. Because you're not supposed to just, you're not just going to take something and just put it into practice just, just because you have it. You don't do that with anything else. But... You know, they're not going to deny everything else, but they deny Morris. As soon as something comes up, though, and they know more that oh, yeah, you know, Morris should go help Natural Tahuti. What are you talking about? For what? You're not down with this. He has no allegiance to this. Oh, yeah, it's just him for. Not that we could, because, you know, he's not no national. Matter of fact, if he didn't talk shit about the prophet and all that, maybe, you know, he wouldn't have got what he got. 
But people think that you could diss the movement and not get something for that. This is very serious business. This is extremely serious business. When you start saying that you're Moors and nationality, speaking about that, you're going to go on YouTube, Brother Hermes L. Bay, you know, one of the Moors, younger Moor, just comes to class or whatever, you know, he put me onto this. You're going to go on YouTube, you're going to go watch Season 2, Episode 3 of The Musketeers. And the episode is called The Good Trader. Right? And it's basically about a brother by the name of, his name again, pretty sure it's Tariq. The Musketeers? Yeah, no, The Musketeers. The Musketeers, like a TV series or whatever. And uh, this, the episode is called The Good Trader. Season 2, Episode 3. And throughout the whole thing, they're calling him a Moran, the whole thing. And they're taking a the position like, you know, whenever they talk to him, they're like, well, the Moors should be on the floor eating out plates like a dog and stuff like that. That's how they're talking. That's the perspective that they're talking from. Relative to these Moors in there. So one of the Musketeers is a dark-skinned brother, right? So he gets locked up with this um, brother Tariq's daughter. And the brother and the sister's like, where are you from or whatever? He's like, oh, you know what I mean? I'm French or whatever like that. She's like, nah, you're not. <laughs> right? He's like, no, nah, I'm French. I was born here or whatever. She's like, nah, you're not French. He's like, well, well, I'm from the, and then Africa and whatever. She's like, well, you're not French. You need to find out who you are or whatever. Because, you know, you have a history of all this stuff. She's breaking down to him. She's trying to convince She's trying to convince him that he's a Moor. He's trying to tell her that, nah, I'm not no more. I'm French. Saying it, I'm not a Moor. But he's dark-skinned. Looking different than anybody else around there. And she's like pulling her like, you know, how come you don't look like anybody else around here or whatever? <laughs> and you're down with them. Right? And wasn't registering with him. Until the end. It finally registered. You know what I mean? So we checked that one out. But that was a good one. Just to show, you know what I mean? Because that's a that's a that's a now time TV show. Right? This is right now. On TV right now. And they're talking about the Moors, that dark people are Moors. Europeans backing it up, talking about yeah, the Moor and the Moors and is that a Moor and all this type of stuff. Yeah, the farmer. Right? Uh, Making a move. Yeah. Part of what I realized is talking about how literature and how basically you have to proclaim it. What I realized is that medium TV is the new literature. Mm -hmm. So what happens is what they've been proclaiming in the past, which we haven't been disagreeing to, we've been accepting, right? Because we don't disagree and it's accepting. Right. So now because karma has changed, they're telling us all. They're telling us now. Yeah. And, and, and then the us process. denying it. <laughs> and when we're in the process of denying, denying it, 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 it's, it's on, on, us. on us. Right. Because, oh, you know, they can't say that they weren't told. Right. Whether it's Musketeers, <laughs> Martin, <laughs> whatever, whoever. Everybody told these people that they're more. Television is the medium of literature. Right. Yep. Um, which is why not so again, we'll get by Robin Hood. What were Yep. Yep. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, 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 right. Um, couple questions. We're just gonna touch those quick fast. Um, <coughs> um, what is the name of our nation? For example, with the United States of America, it's United States. So for us having the Morris Science Temple of America is the name of our nation, Morris Science Temple, or is the name of our nation, Moorish America, as we are Moorish American. Anybody got anything for that? Right. Um, 
being that the Morris Science Temple of America is an organization, that can't be the nation. Like, it's impossible that organization is the nation. Now, that organization can be part of the nation. That organization can be a branch of the nation. That organization can be a place where nationals of a nation go to administer certain things. But that thing itself can't be the nation. I'm more in line with the second half of it, Moorish America, um, because Noble Drew Ali told the Moors that we're Moorish American because we're descendants of Moroccans. So our nation is really Morocco. But it's not over there in the kingdom of Africa or whatever like that. Right? Morocco is over here as well as over there. But the jurisdiction of, of the um, the jurisdiction that we exercise in is Morocco. Our governmental position is Morocco. Our nationality is Moroccan. Today we call it Moorish. Right? Because we aren't the Moroccans of our ancestors. Right? We aren't them. We're descendants of them. So we're Moorish Americans. We're, we, we're Moorish because we pertain to the Moroccan. Um, we're American because American comes from al Morocco, which is still Morocco. So if we say that we're Moorish American, we're saying we're Moroccan. Moroccan. Moroccan right, Moroccans so now. We were, we were before, before that, yeah. So before that, we were Moabites, but yeah. Scipio, yeah, yeah, African. So that's where the Africa came from. Where did the Africa come from? If we're calling here Africa as well. The Africa on this side? Yeah. Um, that came to me. It just sort of connected because supposedly the Africa over there was because of him. Right. Right? But supposedly here is the amalgamation of Africa and of Mexico. But remember, Africa is synonymous with more. And uh, and Africa, the, the true name of Africa so is, is a Mexum. Oh, so yeah. it's not necessarily that that it has, to it has to do with him, because his the, 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 the perspective of of Africa being named after Scipio Africanus is only to the jurisdiction of north of the north. It's not the whole continent. Right, right, right. Saying saying, um, calling over there Africa. If you say Africa relative to over there, right. you only mean the top, the northern yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all you mean. Right. The part that he the conquered. The part that he conquered. That's it. But Nothing then, else then, is called Africa. So saying, the other Africa, the other term Africa, comes from the fact that it's connected with what? America, you saying? Or well, well, America? well uh, the America is, um, is, uh, is al Morocco. Right. America is also a Mexum and Africa right. put together. Right, right, right. A-M-E and R-I-C-A to make America. Right? The The perspective of of over here being Africa right. is not really it, it's 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 to show that here and there are the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. But it's not really that here's Africa. Here's really a Mexum. What you're saying they're just using common using the word Jesus. In order to relate. To, to relate. Right. Once you relate then, then you go. Then, then you go back to Yahshua. You're not going to talk about Jesus then, after. Then we're going to move on to the next step. To the next okay. level, yeah. right? Okay. Um. <laughs> so as more as 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 um. Now, now we have to ask the question too, with regard to the name of our nation, because the name of our nation and the name of our government was going to be two different things, right? Because the government is subordinate to the nation. The government is within the nation, right? So 
in in that we would just look up nation and then that'll tell you what that is and then you look up government and that'll tell you what that is and based on putting this thing together we'll know what our government is and then we'll know what our nation is and and to to to, to be connected to it you have to be a national so you can't you can't be of a government or a nation without a nationality and then once again if we go with what Drew Ali said that we're Moorish American then Moorish is pertaining to the Moors which is pertaining to the Moroccans which is pertaining to the Moabites the Canaanites the Hittites and everybody else from past them and America is pertaining to the land geography geogra the geographical location so, where we are um, making the claim or, or, or residing at. So going back to, you mentioned government, but look what Raleigh also said, we are part of ourselves. Right. So that's where the government aspect of everything comes in with the nation as well. With the nation. So that's where the connection Because every, every, the, the people who set up the United States government, right, was us, but we didn't set that up for us. We set that up for other people. So that means there was government here called something before those people started saying that their government and going around and now everybody believes that United States is the government and the eagle and whatever like that but then nobody talks about the pyramid that under it that says the great seal and then the other one says of the United States so if the one saying the great seal but then you know in history books today they're gonna say that the eagle is the great seal and that the pyramid subordinate that's why they don't use it when the reality is that the Great Seal is really the pyramid. And it says it right there. Yeah, right? And then the eagle is the eagle is not even really an eagle. The eagle is a phoenix bird rising from the ashes. And it says, oh. Because the time is over. And and a new thing is, is taking place. And that new thing taking place is the same thing that happened in the Renaissance where everybody has to live under the rule of the Moors because we're the only real jurisdiction. I think also the reason why the world is Also have jurisdiction other places as well. Right. So that was what this whole point was, was to talk about this jurisdiction. This jurisdiction. In particular. Because you know, Moore's jurisdiction is vast. The jurisdiction right. Over there, over right. there. Over there, there. No, right. We're specific to the Moorish American jurisdiction. Over here. Over here. Not more. So, yeah, we'll talk. Right. So does um does the jurisdiction run from the Caribbean Yeah. Yeah. Because the Caribbean is part of America. But they make it like, you know, it's a separate, it's separate from the mainland. It makes sense because Jamaica has rules which are. Right. Which are right, exactly. Right? They have their sovereignty there. And they have their sovereignty there. Right? And they don't call themselves Jamaican. They refuse to be called that because they know that that's not that's not real. Just like in just like you know, Moors in Nova Scotia, they're not black people. They're Indian. They're native. They don't identify as we're black people, <laughs> right? Because they know that they've been there. They're native to there. You know, when when they, when they say um um. Africa, you know, they, they know they know that that's a fiction. They know it's down with Africa, you know, because they know that they, they've been in in this jurisdiction before this place called that. You know, it's like how it's like how um um the so-called the so-called natives are gonna say they're gonna use their jurisdiction, you know, Turtle Island. When they're dealing with the colonists, but well, we don't call it. They ain't turtle islands to us. That's what that's what the so-called Indians say that this this is Turtle Island and their history and uh, Turtle Island. Okay, yeah, that, I mean that's better than you guys say in Canada, you know. But if they got that card in their pocket that says that they're Indian, then all that is just flapping gums. But they don't stand by that. They don't stand by by Turtle Island if they have a card saying that they're 
Indian that Canada gave them. You know, right? Because the, the other the other thing too is like with 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 the um um with the the jurisdiction of the Moors allows many different avenues in order for us to be clear in our mind, right? Noble Jewali gave us gave us reference points, and with all these different reference points, you can pick one and use that one for freedom. That's why there's there's religious talk. That's why there's civic stuff. That's why there's there's these different you know there's divine, national. There's all these different terms that are used that when you check the terms, you can use any one of those avenues to find yourself back to what the ancient foremothers and forefathers were dealing with before they were colonized. And once once we pinpoint once we pinpoint these things that we can use, it's about implementing them. Because only when you only when you implement it are you gonna see the reaction of whoever is controlling you. Only when we say, um, like with Brother Amari, I reserve my rights. Only putting that on the paper is going to make them say, somebody call somebody else to deal with this guy because, you know, I don't know what to do. Only when you put down a nationality card and say, okay, I'm not, I don't get, you know, no taxes or whatever, would that become something? It's not going to be something if it's just here. If it's just here, it's just information. Until you put it into practice, until you actually do something with it, even on a small level, even on, on, on the most minute level, somebody says black, you correct them. No, sorry, I'm not black, I'm more. That's going to have an impact on that individual. They're going to look at you totally different. They're not going to look at you as like how they look at everybody else automatically things are going to change with your interaction with them and depending on you know where they stand if they're colonizer then you know make sure you know yourself because they're about to come back at you with something to just to see if you're real just to see let us see if you're really who you say you are The, mo the most common right now is, oh, you're you're a free man on the land, mm -hmm. or oh, you're a sovereign citizen, mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's what they do, <laughs> right? That's what they do, you know. And and again, it's you know, it's for us to know. That, no, we're not sovereign citizen. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, we had we had numerous more that got kidnapped. Whatever. First thing. Oh, are you sovereign? I already said that you're more whatever. Are you a sovereign citizen? First thing. First place they go. Because, like you're saying, they want to trap us in the jurisdiction of them having jurisdiction. Because they don't have jurisdiction once we say that we're more. They don't have authority to do the things that they would normally do. So if we get if we get um, um, we go stop one of them right now and bring them in here, they'll do everything that they can to try to you know go with the fact that no you guys are black. What do you mean more? I don't know what you're talking about or what do you mean by that or when they know anybody who's European they know about the more. Trust me, they know about the more. No fall for they don't know. You know? Especially if they're European. They know. Yeah, like common people. If 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 you if if you 
go to them from the perspective of what's their nationality, right? Oh, I'm Canadian. <laughs> no. Before that, before you guys come in here, what's your nationality? Oh, well, you know, my, and then they're going to tell you English or Scottish or Portuguese or whatever like that. And all those places are European. And the Moors ruled Europe for 700 years. They can't hide that. They can't pretend they don't know about the Moors. Right? Exactly. Right? So they can't deny it. They can pretend to deny it, but they're pretending to deny it in the hopes that we agree to disagree. <laughs> they're denying it in hopes that we forget about it. Oh yeah, no, we don't want to talk about that. You know, let's just talk about this over here. When when the, the, the main point that we want to make and get through to anybody that we're dealing with is that you know we have a nationality. Like you just know that I'm, I can't be classified as Negro, Black, colored, whether it's in conversation, whether it's court, talking to somebody on the street, going to a store, whatever. Don't let them classify you. Don't let them have the last word with you being stuck in that status that you know isn't an identity. Because they hold that dark cloud over you forever if you don't say anything. Yeah. Yeah, I have one question. Um, let's say you have a nationality card, like, 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 that's the idea. Yeah. But just to try to bring it back and get your yeah. Your yeah. Do you have a whatever? No, I don't. Even if you got it, I don't know what you're talking about. This is my ID right here. But then also too, the other thing too is that you know, the, the in order to 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 present those two things, one of them has to have rights reserved on it. Then the other one is your backup to this fraud, right? So the license is fraud. So once if if knowing that it's a fraudulent document, you should reserve your rights on it, but just because it's a fraudulent document. So we're going to reserve our rights on this on this thing called a driver's license. But if like for example. I'm, I'll have, um, I go to a store, I put down a nationality card, no tax, right? But I'm giving them Interact. That doesn't have the name of the nationality card on the Interact card. But, you know, I don't get no tax though. You know, it's a conflict, right? But we're under occupation. So there's loopholes everywhere because they can't really occupy somewhere that they don't have jurisdiction over. They can by force, right? Like they can do the things that they do, right? And, and we know that they're going to do whatever it is that they do because, you know, they're the ones with the army and police force and, you know, people with guns, batons, tasers, whatever, right? But that doesn't take away from us standing up for what we know is right because they have those stuff because they're occupied you know it comes it comes back to it comes back to the same thing of um, we're, we're under occupation, right? So being that we're under occupation, we have to, we have to see things as they are. You know what I mean? Like, 
it's like it's it's almost like look at it from the perspective of of matrix going for your job is lay down the chair plug you in or whatever like that and then you know you're in that jurisdiction where it's not porridge every day you know what i mean right it's it's an it's an illusion there's no real money you know what i mean nobody's not really getting paid whether you use a free national name or whether you use straw name you're still not getting paid but they don't got no gold and silver to give you or whatever right my position is if i'm if i'm national and i deal with gold and silver why am i going to go work for these guys in a name that should be getting gold and silver as payment yeah reserve your rights learn to live within contract because everything is contracted just reserve your rights because we're under occupation and we know that you know we got livelihoods out here you know what i mean like it, it un unfortunately but we got a livelihood out here and i've been had i was telling my brother this last night i've been had stores out here and our people don't support nothing of their own i know that for a fact that they don't support their own especially now that i'm talking about moors or whatever and i have a store they definitely not supporting nothing right now so we're gonna have to compromise a little bit you know what i mean right and you know we might have to go to the european get, get some stuff you know, i mean we got phone from the european so what's the difference with the job we got electricity from the european what's the difference with the job like what you know what i mean like you know we, we, got, we got more we got cell phone that's not from some moorish phone company that's a european so what's the difference learn to live within contracts Reserve your rights on anything you sign with those people, right? And, you know, do what you can to, to help yourself get through this mess right here that we're in. Because we were born into this occupation. Like, it's not like, you know, we're seeing it from its inception. You know, we were born into it. So there, there's no real getting out of it like that. Like how people, you know, live off the grid and all that stuff. They ain't living off no grid around here. You know? So you want to um, you want to claim the executor of that from that, right? Not well, not necessarily making a claim. Yeah, not necessarily making a claim that you know you have the authority to use through every right time. Because when you start talking about your claim and stuff, that's slave trade. Because that is a person. Even if it's corporate, you're still a person. And if you're claiming a person, then you're saying you're a slave master. But slavery is supposed to be abolished. So now you're talking about international war crime now, just because you know you made a claim on that, opposed to using it out of private necessity, because we're under occupation. So yeah, I could give you nationality card as identification to go get a job or whatever. But you know, knowing that. The job that I'm going for is paying sixty thousand a year, and then you're gonna have to give me all that sixty thousand, no tax, because I'm applying in this name, and then you're gonna have to pay the tax corporation. They're not paying that. You're paying that. If I was them, I wouldn't pay that. I'll fire you and hire somebody else out there before I pay your tax for you. That I'm supposed to be really paying, and you didn't fall for the game that you know you should pay it. You know what I mean, right? You're telling them, nah, I'm national. You pay it. You're the corporation. They'll say, how about we just don't hire you? We we'll hire somebody else and pay him thirty thousand, <laughs> right? So now they save thirty thousand, but they were gonna pay you sixty. They bring somebody else on, pay him thirty, and he's paying the tax. They'll go with that before, you know what I mean? It's no different than um. Then um, with, with right to travel, you know what I mean? Somebody out here could have New York plates or whatever like that, and New Jersey plates flying up and down the place. They're not stopping them, giving them no tickets, because there's no jurisdiction. That like, what, what are they gonna do? They're gonna tell a guy from New York, oh, yeah, here's a ticket, go back to New York or whatever, and then come back on the court date for whatever. They're not coming back here for no court date, right? 
But let Morris have some plates out there. They're not going to talk about, oh, no, we don't have jurisdiction. You know, let him go or whatever. They're going to find every way. Check VIN number. Where's your license? Or oh, you don't got a license? Where's your social? Or oh, you don't got that? Where's the birth certificate? Or oh, you don't got that? Well, show me something. You know what I mean? That says a name on it that we know is tied to this ownership of this thing right here in all capital letters, blah, blah. Because they know that once Moors do it, it's precedent. And if they let it fly too, then you know more is going to be using that stuff against these people. Let more win something in court. Open. Like, let them dismiss something openly. Not even, you know, letting everybody out the court or whatever like that. Just first thing, go up. Yeah, we don't own it. you guys have no jurisdiction. You know what I mean? I'm LB, whatever. And they just dismiss it off the bat. All those people who are coming up next, <laughs> trust me, they're going to say that same thing that that guy just went up there and said. Whether they have knowledge of it or not, they're just going to go up and say, hey, um, I'm El Bay, I don't know, you guys don't have jurisdiction. <laughs> right? And they, they know that it would happen. Like They know the, the ripple effect of, you know, Moore's doing something opposed to, you know, somebody else who doesn't have status doing something and then, you know, get, getting out of it. I don't know if you're thinking of this, but I The, the agreement was 40 acres and a mule. Yeah. That ain't nothing. <laughs> That's it. No, but remember, reparations means to repair a nation. So what's 40 acres and a mule doing today in 2015? What are you gonna, everybody's going to go line up to get 40 acres and a mule today? What are you going to... They all got mules around here. <laughs> Right? And, and, and like Brother Amari said, that was supposed to be done through the Freedman's Bureau. <laughs> right? You know? Yeah. You know what I mean? But you got your church. That's, I mean, like, okay, I just mentioned the Freedman's Bureau again. Like, that was the process for you to get what you needed. You had to go to the Bureau to, to discharge your slave name and take on your take free on your name. Free name. They give you what you need to sustain yourself, and you move forward. At the same time, they created the free church. When you go to church and you, you know, please, Jesus, la, 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 and, you know, save me. Then within seven years, the freedman's like, wait, where's all the people that said they want to be free? Oh, they're in church over there. Well, you feel like, okay, well, <laughs> all right, since nobody wants to be free, we all have church next week. Right? So, then it goes back again. Our people. Don't blame the Europeans. Blame your people. Blame out. Right, any more? Any more questions? Well, if you want to put out there, um, anybody has any um, um, input on Juali Day? How it went? Learn something? Whatever. Just, just put that up to close out.
Yeah, so, maybe. Yeah, 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 maybe. Because I mean, they they know that that you know the awakening is happening. They know that people are vibrating on a different frequency, even though we might not realize what's going on at first. All these people who are at, at the wickets or the, the, the front line people, they see people coming that have certain, you know what I mean, levels of information or whatever. You know, and remember those people are gatekeepers, so their job is to get you not to do what it is that you're coming in there with the energy to do. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, you, you might not have, but you know, spirit doesn't lie or whatever. You know what I mean? Everybody who's on this information if they if they look back into you know their their past before they came into this information, they'll realize that they've been on more science all their life. That they always been morals. That they never accepted black as an identity and never accepted Negro and, and you know I mean big things like that. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's something internal. Right? It's something that you can't you can't really um bury who you are spiritually you know what i mean you can't you can't you can't um omit your 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 higher self to gratify the lower self you know higher self won't allow that you know what i mean even when even when being our lower self you know it's like it's like um as we talk about like back in the day we used to go clubbing and drinking or whatever you know what i mean and you know I'm designated driver. You know, there's half times I don't know how we got home. <laughs> Dropped home five people and all that stuff. I didn't remember dropping nobody off, but you know what I mean? I wake up home in my bed or whatever. <laughs> something's something's looking out. You know what I mean? Something's looking out. You know what I mean? You you just out there doing stuff. You know what I mean? Like how much people people who, you know, even even People who were in, in in dirt, you know what I mean? Street dirt, you know what I mean? Bullets zing past guys' ears and stuff like that. They heard the bullet go, shh, you know? That's not happenstance. That's something's looking out for you or whatever, you know what I mean? Something's looking out. There's a, there's some type of higher force that's making sure that something doesn't happen. There are all these people, and, and it's something that... that you know, only when I got into this information that I really looked at it from that perspective. Because, you know, doing a lot of reflecting on past things or whatever, you know, was I really on this information all the time? And then, you know, wake up and you see all these people crashing their car or whatever, crashing a light pole, kill people, run over people, drunk driving and all this type of stuff, and never had an accident ever. All the drinking that we did, never ever got no accident, ever. Not even... Do you know what I mean? Swerve, nothing like that. No, no, nothing happened. You know what I mean? You know, car totaled or whatever. You know, you see all these things, all these, you know, amazing stuff people do or whatever like that. Guys doing 500 flips on a bike off something. You know what I mean? You think that, that think he did that 50 times to get that right? She tried that one time and landed it. You know what I mean? And then, you know, it's just like, like you say with, with Duncan. You dunk once, you dunk, dunking all the time after that. You don't know trying no more. You know? If you, if you, you know, um, people who, it's like, you know, when, when, like I became vegetarian first in my family. I didn't know how to cook before that. I didn't cook nothing. My mom did all the cooking. So when I turned vegetarian, you know, it might not taste good a few times or whatever, but you learn fast. <laughs> you learn fast how to season some peppers. <laughs> how to season some peppers and some cauliflower or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but we've been, we've been on, on, on this. You know what I mean? We've been on this. You know? And we know that we've been on this because this is something that you can't hide. You know? We know that we're more. We know that we have a birthright. So, you know, pray, praise a lot for the prophet. For, for doing everything that he did, sacrificing to, up to his life to make sure that you know we have we have our status and we have our our nationality to proclaim. Oh yeah, one more just to put it out there again. Um, 
Unseen Forces, Manly P. Hall, Dirt Sheep Online, I think Amazon has it, and the new book, You Are Not Negro, Black, Colored, Morisco, Nor an African Slave, Kudrado L. Khalifa Media, Khalifa, C A L I F A Media dot com. You can get that. And we just got our our new installment of Mars in America. Make sure you pick that up. That's uh that's definitely a gem that everybody needs to have in their library. So if there's no more questions, we'll close out. Want to say Islam to all the Moors online for holding steadfast. I know we went a little over time today, but you know, y'all not complaining about long class. Um, next week we have um, Sister Sila Bay doing her second Skype Skype class um, on etymology. And right now we're looking for um, lectures for our Moorish History Month series that we usually do every year, which is just, you know, beating up on black history and, you know, showing all that's a fraud. So, so far we got, um, we got Brother Mizraim, um, who is um, Sister Riley's son. We got him lined up. We got Asir lined up. We got um, Nature lined up and trying to find somebody else and we might also um considering doing some couple free sessions over at the same spot by kennedy okay. yeah um just to see who we could get to do to do a, a big one a couple big ones over there so yeah so we'll see what we could do huh free. yeah free free of where it's at so let's uh, just close out and um that will be that for today. Face the east, five on the left, two on the right. A lot of father of the universe, father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day, to his holy prophet, noble Dwali, is love. Islam Moors, peace. It's on um the on the last set of racks, bottom shelf. Iron sheet five.